says we're still talking about sort of the account and role and some of the things uh, there. Obviously, one place that we use the system a lot is journal entries. Standard functionality here, right? I mean, there's nothing um, over the top here, but there are a few nice features here that make entering journal entries also reclassifying or classifying those those journal entries to those dimensions easy for us to do. So I'm going to come into it right from my, again, from my role center page. We'll come into a journal entry. I have a journal entry batch for, for myself for the demo. A journal or a batch of journals can be user defined. So if we have multiple people in the organization that post journal entries, I may create a, a, a journal named me, right? I don't want anybody else in there. I may not be finished with my journals. People can create their own batches and work in their own workspaces when they create journals. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna delete these lines to start. So let's do two things here while we're on the journal window. Let's go ahead and delete my lines. And in this scenario, maybe we're coming up on month end and we have to do a, a an accrual for salaries. Right? We have we pay people every two weeks, but you know, at the end of the month, we have a few days in the month where they're going to get paid next month, and we need to to book an accrual for that. Now, my journal entry for that is very similar. It's the same lines over and over again every month. So what I can do is get a standard journal. So I've created this journal in, in advance of the demo, but if you look right below that, if we the first time we create one of our journals that may be something we do over and over again, I can save that journal as a standard journal. And then that becomes something I can reuse over and over again. So again, very easy to create a journal entry and then even turn that into a template that you use over and over again. But in my case, I have the template, so I'm going to go get that standard journal. I call it salaries. We bring that in. I'm going to get that journal entry in the same, the same way I post that every single month. Now, I'm a little, it's only 9-7, maybe it's, let's go ahead and say it's September 30th. We're doing this at the end of the month. This will give us something to report off of later. And we come across and we can see we have some amounts in here. Now, I elected to create my journal and save the amounts um, in the journal. If it's something that's the journal entry is the same, but the amounts change. There's also an option to create a recurring journal and not save the amounts. So maybe we change the date and the amounts, and then it allows us to post. So it's really saving me a lot of time in creating that journal entry. The other thing you'll notice here is I have the department code here. So that's my dimension. Right? So I have a dimension here that I'm assigning to my salary's expense. So it's not just my account, but my department as well. Everything looks good here. We'll go ahead and post. Now, the other thing we'll, we'll look at here is, if, if you remember a few minutes ago, we we created a new dimension called Trade Show, right? And so our marketing department is out there. They're at CES. They're at a trade show. I know that they're incurring expense. Maybe the manager of marketing is sort of submitting submitting to me the estimate of the expense so far that they've incurred uh, for going to CES. So I'll keep my date the same in this example. We come across, I'm gonna look up an account on my general ledger so that I can book that accrual and that expense. So we'll just pick an account. So now we're looking at our chart of accounts. So we have an accrued expense account here. So we'll go ahead and put that. Maybe they've already spent $10,000. So I'm expecting invoices from all of my vendors to come in for that. And then let's look at, we might have a marketing expense out there. Let's go. There we go, we'll put it to advertising expense. So I definitely know I want to put this to the marketing department, but if I look across the screen, I don't see an option to add the trade show. What we can do is add those fields to my journal entry window. So what we're going to look at in this case is the ability to personalize a window to add or remove fields that you, you don't use for those particular transactions. So if I go into personalize, I'll select more and I'll go ahead and just add a field to this window. Right? So this is not a dimension that existed before. My existing journal entry window did not 
know that I was going to add this dimension. But now that I've added it, it's something that I do want to make sure that I capture on transactions. I can bring that in. So if I just look down, we'll kind of go through. You can see there's a lot of fields on here that we can bring onto a window. So what I'm, what I'm looking at here on the right-hand side is a list of fields that are available to me should I need them when I make a journal entry. Now, I don't want all of them on there because I don't use them all. Um, so bringing them all on and creating extra fields that I have to either tab through or ignore or understand that I don't use is inefficient. So I really personalize the window so it only has the key fields on it that I use on a regular basis. And this is per user. Some users may need more fields than others. Um, that's totally fine. So we're going to go down the shortcut dimensions. Uh, I know I have four dimensions, so I'm going to bring in shortcut dimension four, and I'm going to put it right next to the department. So with the personalization, I also get to decide where in the window do I want it. I'm somebody who enters the account number first and then the other parts. Somebody else may put department trade show and then account. So they can modify these windows to match sort of how they think about making an entry into the system. Again, something that makes data entry for an end user more efficient. People can then personalize those, uh, those windows. So I know we, we have marketing. Uh, we don't have marketing, so I'll go ahead and put it to sales. This is the department code. And then we know, maybe I picked the wrong dimension code. Let's bring them all on there. Get our shortcut dimensions. Let's bring them all. Let's go three and five. So again, I'm bringing on shortcut dimensions because that's what the dimensions that you add to the system will be referenced as, as additional shortcut dimensions that you can add data to. And let's take a look and make sure it didn't rename it for me. No, so we should be okay. Okay, now let's see where we're at. Oops, so we know it's not four. Okay, so we can see that I've added dimension, but I don't yet see it. So what I forgot to do is tell the system, okay, which dimension is this? Right, so I've created a dimension, but I haven't assigned it to which location that I'm gonna pull this dimension out. So right from the journal entry screen, we're going to use the global search. So what's nice about Business Central is I might be here. I see that I have a problem. I can then go correct that problem, come right back to where I was. So we're going to go into our general ledger setup. So where we need to define where we put our dimension is in the general ledger setup. And we can see I've assigned my dimensions to these codes. I'm going to put trade show as shortcut dimension four. Close that up. Now I have shortcut dimension four being assigned to what we had just created earlier for trade shows. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab that value where we now get to see our trade shows. So we're at CES. So what we're doing is accruing some expense against that dimension for CES. And we'll put the 10,000 in there. Actually, to make it a little more, because we'll do some reporting on these dimensions later, let's split this between two trade shows. Because right, we may have some expenses of September, and I want to see what marketing did for trade shows it, side by side. And I might want to trial balance for this and see, okay, I have trade shows, but you know, what do we do for CES? What do we do for uh, the GSA? And so we can split those, and then we'll show how we'll, we'll be able to report on those um, after we get these entries to our general ledger. So we definitely want to hit our department, and maybe the second one was for the GSA. So I'm taking an accrual of $10,000 and splitting that same national account, right? So my total expense for the sales department is $10,000. But then I'm going a step further by splitting that inside of that department across two different trade shows. All right, so a really great way to add some additional information to what entries will hit your general ledger. Okay, so we will go ahead and post that. So we've got a couple of postings on our ledger for September, uh, things that we'll be able to uh, report on as we go. 
so that's great we got some entries in there we've put them to departments we've created another dimension we added some expense to a trade show now how do i get to see that right where do i get to potentially now go look and grab that information we think the easiest ways to do that is going to be via the trial balance all right so if i look at let's go uh, let's go to our trial balance we'll do that from our chart of accounts so we take a look at that as well so if we look downward, when we look at our chart of accounts, we are just going to see the naturals at this point. I'm just looking at what do I have in cash? What do I have in accounts payable? If I go down and look at our marketing expense, right? We put that in advertising. We're just going to see the total $10,000, right? But now I know that we've split this into other dimensions. So if we go ahead and run a report, let's run the reports from over here. Okay, so what we're going to report on is using the trial balance, looking at our dimensions in this case. So we'll start by looking at a global dimension first. So we'll look at our spread by global dimension. And I know one of my global dimensions, uh, which is kind of, a, in this case, is the dimension I set up as a default. Right, something that I really do want to capture on every transaction. So I set that up as a global dimension. We have some default reports that can do that. So if we look at a trial balance, we're going to get some options here. So I've run one of these before, but what we're looking at here is I want to run this by my department. And then below, I want to run it for posting accounts. And maybe I only want to look at the expenses. I'm not using departments or this particular dimension on balance sheet. So I don't want those accounts to come in. If I look at the options here, I also can exclude income and cost of goods sold. Right, so I'm, I'm only looking at potentially my operating expense accounts that relate to those departments. And of course, I want to just look at my income statements. And let's run this for a date range that spans uh, the entire year. So we pick up uh, as many transactions as we can. I have an option here to print this to Excel. When I print that out, you'll be able to see that open up. And we'll see our expenses and then side by side, see our departments and again I did this for departments we'll look at another method of looking at the dimensions let's run no, there it goes uh, which will be an analysis by dimension we can do some additional reporting on our trade show in our example so now I have a very simple trial balance I have my natural accounts here and if we look at what I have across the top are my departments and I can see there's that salary accrual I had some office expense. We can see I have advertising expense and that is all against my sales department. Now again, in our example, that 10,000 is split even further. So let's go a little bit deeper into that and look at what else we can do with dimensions. So let's go to our analysis by dimension in this case. So I wanna do some further analysis. I know I have some additional dimensions out there and I wanna report on them. So I've gone ahead and I already have a view here, but these views are, are, we can create them, users can create them, they can make selections about getting information regarding the dimensions that are important to them. So I've created one for a trade show. We'll go ahead and, that's all set up fine. We'll go ahead and do an analysis by that. And here I'm gonna make a few changes to this because what I wanna see is I wanna see my my trade shows in my columns. Once the accounts have the side and then let the system tell me, you know, what period, what quarter, what year uh, these entries were booked in. So the first thing I'm going to do when I come across here is I'm going to change how I want to see my columns. I want to see this by trade show. And I want to see this for all trade shows. So I'm just going to go ahead and select them all. So I'm looking at all trade shows putting that in my column. I want to run this for, I know September had a lot of expense, so let's go ahead and run that for the whole month of September. And I'm looking at my advertising expense account. I could also put in a range of accounts, right? I have a range of GL accounts and a range of dimensions here if, if I need it. I'm going to view that as a net change and let's view it by day. All right, let's show this matrix. 
So if we look out at this matrix, I now can see my advertising expense. There's that $10,000 that was posted to the sales. But now I can see that 5,000 of it was for CES and 5,000 for the GSA. We can also then export this out to Excel, potentially send this to someone, let them pivot, let them build reports, etc. This analysis by dimension is also used in account schedules. So I can create even P&Ls uh, by these dimensions. I can also expose this, these analysis uh, this analysis by dimension in Power BI. So multiple ways to tag the information, do the analysis depending on where the user is working. Click on our second tab here and get that information out. So here I can see I have CES and the GSA. There's my 5,000. If I look at the time frames it's tracking, it's tracking the day, the week, the month, the quarter, and the year. So if somebody was to pivot this, they can use those elements in their pivot table to get those totals.